Civil War soldiers sometimes fought on mountains, sometimes they fought in the woods, they fought along rivers and streams, but most often they fought in places like this, open fields. And if you've seen a Civil War movie, or you've read about the Civil War, or been to a reenactment, you know that soldiers fought in long lines of battle, shoulder to shoulder, and nothing could look stupider to us now. But these soldiers didn't have a death wish. It's not that they weren't smart, they were using the most modern military tactics they had available to them. But the problem is, is that there were advancements in weaponry that made some of those tactics obsolete. This is not unique. This happens again and again. After every war, you reevaluate and you change those tactics in the following war. The invention I'm talking about more than anything else is the widespread use of rifling. Um, before the Civil War, guns, uh, handheld guns, fired round bullets, and they could shoot 50 to 100 yards accurately. But suddenly, um, they're going to have a rifled musket be more common that fires these things, mini balls. This is a Union mini ball, most commonly because it has three rings. This one is a Confederate mini ball. It has two rings. Um, this isn't absolute, but this is typically how they went. And these things not only spin as they leave the barrel because of grooves in the gun barrel called rifling, but they are also concave inside, which allow the bullet to actually expand and take to the grooves better. And then it spirals as it leaves the gun, and like a spiral football, these bullets will fly farther and more accurately. And suddenly, you can fire these things 250, 300, 350 yards more accurately. And what that says is, is that your enemy is going to get off a lot more shots at you when you're crossing that field toward them. Before the Civil War, you could get up pretty close to your enemy, make a final charge, and then overrun the position after they fired a shot or maybe two. That's not the case in the Civil War. When people tell me that Civil War soldiers had a death wish or weren't that intelligent, I ask them what they would have done. And the most common answer I get is they say, well, I would send 200 guys over here, and then 50 guys over there, and then 300 guys this way, and then 40 more this way, and 100 over in that direction. That doesn't work. All your enemy would do is shoot the first 200, reload, shoot the next 50, reload, shoot the next 100, reload, shoot the next 200, and so on. In the Civil War, it's important to march up to your enemy to deliver a concentrated fire at once. If you march up with a thousand soldiers, maybe one or 200 of them could be killed or wounded in that first volley, but you still have eight or 900 left to deliver a concentrated fire against your enemy. These are also large armies, huge armies, operating without walkie-talkies or cell phones, so it's very hard to keep them together. Marching shoulder to shoulder, waving flags, blowing bugles are some of the ways where you communicated with these troops in order to keep them moving in the battle. Imagine a large-scale battle and a huge football stadium emptying and trying to control everybody in that, trying to get them to do what you want them to do to move your army around. Very, very difficult. And the frontal movements, these get there first with the most men, bring the greatest num amount of firepower as you can against your enemy, was a very important part of the Civil War. So while attacking frontally was still an important part of the Civil War, you had to get at your enemy somehow. One of the ways that you could get at your enemy, which was effective then and is effective now, is of course via flanking. Instead of attacking your enemy straight on, you can get around the end of their line. When you get around the end of their line, they're in big trouble because if they try to fire in this direction, all their friends are in the way. Whereas if I fire from over here, I can't miss. My guys, if they don't hit him, he'll hit him or him or him or him or him. That is called raking the line or enfilade. And if you are flanked, you have two choices, run away or get shot. And despite what some people think, these soldiers did not have a death wish, so they would simply fall back and try to take up a stronger position where they could actually face their enemy. Flanking is a very effective maneuver, and it's one of many used throughout the Civil War to try to get at your enemy, to try to gain an advantage over them. 